Now on BBC One, it's all aboard... as though it was firing correctly to start with. Now we're in slow motion, Tim, if you can just take it through it, take us through it. The, the, the solid rocket booster on the left-hand side doesn't look as though it's firing very cleanly, and it could be that there was a malfunction in that which perhaps ruptured the external tank, or there was a leakage of fuel around the external tank which was ignited by the solid rocket booster. The problem here, you'll see the explosion in a second, the main explosion happens in this, almost the centre of the external tank, underneath the belly of the shuttle, just there. And that is where there is a fuel line um, down into the main engines of the shuttle. Now, th the problem is that um, people have suggested, I've heard on the American television, that the solid rocket boosters, uh, or the solid rocket booster on the left-hand side was at fault. But if you, look after, if you continue looking at this film, you'll see that both solid rocket boosters appear to be continue, continue to fire, the one on the right-hand side and the one on the left. The one on the right-hand side you should see in a minute firing away and a little bit later on there's a, a, a there it is now coming out right. on the right hand side and that seems to be perfectly all right the one on the left which people say might have malfunctioned seemed to me to be firing all right afterwards um, and they they seem to be going off at different angles um, and firing perfectly all right so it could be um, a partial solid rocket booster uh, fault which ruptured the fuel tank or uh, perhaps a rupture in a, um, the fuel line down into the main engines. But I don't think there was a problem with the main engines themselves. Now, Tim, is there any way anybody could have survived that horrific fireball there? Well, that, that tank is just one great big pack of dynamite uh, and there is just no way anybody could survive that. It just would have broken up the whole vehicle. T Tim Furness, incidentally, uh, is a spaceflight journalist. I'm also joined by David Wilson, who was the BBC's... Uh, science correspondent till very recently, and also by, by um, Dr. John Paday, uh, who is a British scientist with Kodak, who is hoping to go up in the shuttle uh, sometime this year. Uh, John, just briefly, would you just tell us why you're hoping to go up in the shuttle and whether well, you're still keen to do it? Well, um, an obvious question. First of all, I'm not planning or hoping to fly this year. The state of the art is that um, Kodak, uh, exploring the possibilities of building on some of the fluid physics work that I've already completed in space and also some of the work that I have been doing with the astronauts in the para parabolic flying. This does, is short, does, uh, short duration. Now, um, the, what um, Eastman Kodak are doing is to explore the possibilities of a joint endeavor agreement for flying myself in the shuttle. That is in early stages. It is, there is no flight allocated, there is no joint endeavor agreement at the moment. John, I, I think you're 58, are you? I'm 58. Will you be one of the, the, the oldest astronauts in the business, or will you? Well, um, at the you, moment, you been I'm beaten? not an the astronaut. Been beat? Um, no, um, I don't know. I'm not out to break records. Um, I'm not particularly interested in records. I'm a scientist, I, uh, and I'm in really um, only wanting to use this unique environment for a whole series of not shattering breakthroughs, but certainly steps forward that have got to be taken if you want to explore the environment of space in all its forms. Well, John Paddy, let me now drag you back to the tragedy of today yeah. and ask you whether that hasn't made you think twice about wanting to go up in, in a shuttle. It's not a question. I don't know what has happened today. There, um, there are many things that could have happened. Um, was it, in fact... Uh, well, we'll examine that in a moment in great detail. I'd like to yes. you to begin to it have another look at uh, that picture. Well, but what about your own, what about your own well, thoughts about um, the shuttle? All, all the um, astronauts will be thinking, how about me? Um, I haven't had time to think. Um, it um, obviously uh, needs to be thought about. But um, my, the realism of this whole um, tragedy is that it's going to delay the program the whole shuttle program, and it may well delay it far beyond the time that is, it is reasonable for me to fly. D David Wilson, let's just look again in a moment at those pictures, and could you tell us what you think might have happened? Then we'll bring Tim in as well. J just in broad terms first, what do you think caused it? Well, 
Well, speaker. One very, uh, it looks to me as a final thing was that the main external tank ruptured uh, after some fire had damaged it. I'm inclined to think that this all happened just after the whole thing had gone through what they call maximum Q. Is that the most dangerous moment of the flight? Well, it's the moment when the, the physical stressors on the machine are the greatest. And that's why they throttle down, as Tim said, and then throttle back up again when they've gone through it. So it's just after it had gone through the moment of greatest stress, then something goes wrong. Now, that implies, it seems to me, some possible mechanical malfunction, perhaps a fuel line going. Uh, the other thing is that uh, one I'm interested in is the question of whether one of the solid ro rocket boosters went wrong. Now, it is worth remembering that at an earlier flight, one of them, in fact, when it was recovered, had, I think, very nearly burnt through its casing. Now, it is just possible that something of that sort could have happened again uh, and thus set fire in some way to the fuel coming from the big external tank into the shuttle's own engines. But now, Tim, how likely is a terrifying event of this sort? Are, are they, I mean, to, 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 to use a ridiculous phrase, are they dicing with death at every second of these flights? I mean, is this terrifying that a fuel line could sever like that and this whole thing could blow up? How dangerous is this kind of flight? We've come to accept it as quite normal, as commonplace. Yes, that's right. Well, the Space Shuttle has certainly demonstrated that getting into space is seemingly routine, but having said that, there have been 25 shuttle flights is since 1981, and you compare that with the number of um, test flights, say, that the Concorde did, or the number of um, civil air aircraft that have been flying. So, I mean, the, the, the chances of something going wrong um, were there, and, and the astronauts were perfectly prepared to accept that one day something dramatically was going to go wrong. The hope was that there were enough redundancies built into the system to overcome them. On a previous flight, an engine shut down. It didn't really affect the flight too much because redundant systems came in and the shuttle was able to get into orbit. Right. Let, let's, let's look at it again uh, in slow motion, and, see, and once again, can you, can, you, can you take us through it? Well, there's another point I'd like to raise, actually, with Tim on this. Well, yes. th there's the fire, look, you see, round the main external tank. That's it above it the like main fire. flame there, the little... Yes, yeah, there are two, yes. two areas of fire there, which could be um, fuel igniting, and, and that there is the final moment yeah. where uh, a fuel line seems to have ruptured. That's the fuel line that leads down into the shuttle main engine. It doesn't seem to me, David, that there was any problem with the main engines themselves. Well, I'm a bit worried about that, as I said to you before. Mm. There's a couple of flares which, earlier on, much earlier on, 10 or 20 seconds before that, yeah. which... Well, they could be that the picture had gone out I of focus. I thought it was going out of focus and it back in again. It could be that. I personally have never seen it happen mm. like that before on mm. these pictures, and so I'm a bit uh, mm. dubious as to whether something went wrong there. But that was certainly at the moment, as you're correct to say, when they were throttling down and then throttling up again. That, I think, is very interesting, because there, as you say, is the solid rocket booster going swooshing out the edge, and obviously still firing perfectly satisfactorily. Yes. It would be interesting to see, a little bit later on in the explosion, the other... Yeah, the one that goes there. off to the left, doesn't if it? If they had, at that moment, been able to get out of the caps, out of the, out of the, the, the shuttle's mm -hmm. cockpit, well, how would, what at that well, time they, they were, they, were they parachuted they, they'd down? Have, they have no, no parachutes and they have no means of ejection. They literally, if there was a problem, an impending problem, they could have separated from the stack, which is an entirely, it's a very unusual thing Separated to do. from the? Pro from the whole stack, that's the external tank and the solid rocket boosters. Right. It's not an established abort procedure, but in a dire emergency, they'd literally just break away from the whole stack and glide, hopefully, in some sort of control to a sea, right. a sea ditching Tim, or possibly back a, to the a Cape flash from Washington, President Reagan has said that there will be no more spaced missions, space, mm. no more manned space missions until mm. the cause of the disaster is established. So although he has said that there will be, there's no question of cancelling uh, cancelling the shuttle program, uh, there will be no more missions until the, until the cause of this thing is established. Uh, will that take a long time? I don't think it will take very long and I don't think it necessarily means that the shuttle program is going to be finished for the whole of this year because there are four more orbiters, uh, that's the shuttle main planes, uh, that are scheduled to be flying this year. And if it is found that the problem is a sort of a...